I had always heard rumors about the old Whitmore estate at the edge of town, a crumbling behemoth cloaked in ivy and shadow, whispered to be cursed by those who dared speak of it. I never believed in curses, until the night I ventured inside. The air was thick with fog as I approached the gate, the iron twisted and grotesque, like the contorted limbs of tortured souls. With a push that sent a shriek of rust through the night, I stepped onto the property. The path to the mansion was overgrown, the branches reaching out like the fingers of the dead, desperate for something living to touch. As I neared the front door, a chill ran down my spine, the type of cold that feels like it's trying to burrow its way into your bones. I told myself it was just the night air, but somewhere deep inside, I knew it was something more. I raised my hand to knock, but found the door already ajar, inviting me into the darkness. Hello? My voice was barely a whisper, drowned out by the sound of my heart pounding in my chest. There was no answer only the soft creaking of the house settling, or so I hoped. The foyer was draped in shadows, the only light provided by the flicker of my flashlight, casting long, sinister shadows against the walls. As I moved forward, the floorboards groaned under my weight, a mournful sound that seemed almost like a warning. I ventured deeper into the house, drawn by a morbid curiosity that drowned out the screaming of my instincts to flee. The air grew colder, my breath visible in the beam of my flashlight. The walls were lined with portraits, eyes seeming to follow me, expressions twisted in silent screams and hollow despair. In the parlor, a grand piano sat, its keys dusty and stained. Without thinking, I pressed a key, the note hanging in the air, discordant and shrill like a scream. The sound triggered a flurry of whispers that filled the room, voices so faint I thought I might be imagining them. Don't wake them, a voice hissed, so close I could almost feel the breath on my ear. I spun around, my flashlight darting from corner to corner, revealing nothing but the empty room. Heart racing, I continued to explore, each room more decrepit than the last, each filled with its own nightmare. In one room, a mirror stood against the wall, its surface fogged. I watched in horror as a handprint appeared, followed by another, as if someone were trapped inside, desperately trying to escape. I should have left then, but I couldn't. Something compelled me to stay, to uncover the secrets held within these walls. Up the staircase, the woodworm-ridden steps protested with every footfall. The second floor was a labyrinth of hallways and doors, each whispering secrets. I opened a door to what looked like a child's bedroom, toys scattered across the floor, untouched by time. A dollhouse, a perfect replica of the Whitmore estate, sat in the corner. As I approached, I noticed the figures inside the house, each positioned like the portraits downstairs. My flashlight flickered, and for a moment, I saw a figure standing in the doorway of the miniature house, staring out at me with hollow eyes. Panicking, I backed away, bumping into something soft. Whirling around, my heart stopped as I saw a figure hanging by a noose from the ceiling. I stumbled back, the flashlight beam catching on a note left on the floor, leave us. My mind screamed to obey, to flee this nightmare, but my body moved on its own, deeper into the house. I found the library, walls lined with books that seemed to whisper as I passed. In the center of the room, a single book lay open on a stand, its pages yellowed with age. The words were written in a frantic, scrawling hand, detailing the rituals and summonings performed by the last of the Whitmores. As I read, the temperature dropped, my breath clouding in front of me. The whispers grew louder, angrier. Shadows danced at the edge of my vision, forms half-glimpsed and quickly gone, but their presence felt. I tried to leave, but found myself turning pages, compelled to read on. Then, the candles in the room ignited by themselves, casting an eerie glow. 
The shadows solidified, forming into the shapes of the Whitmores, their eyes empty pools of despair. Why have you disturbed us? One asked, its voice a cacophony of voices, male and female, young and old. I didn't mean to, I stammered, backing towards the door. I, I'll go. No, the figure hissed, moving closer. You know our secrets now. You cannot leave. I turned to run, but the door slammed shut, enveloped by the darkness that seemed to consume the light. My flashlight flickered and died, plunging me into darkness. I felt hands upon me, cold and unyielding, dragging me back into the depths of the house. I screamed, but no sound escaped my lips as the darkness swallowed me. The last thing I saw before my vision faded was the faces of the Whitmores, twisted into grotesque smiles of triumph. And then there was nothing but the sound of my own heart, beating a frantic rhythm as the darkness pressed in, suffocating, relentless. The floor beneath me felt like it was moving, shifting like the belly of some great beast. I was lost, swallowed whole by the house that wanted to keep me, to make me one of its own. In that darkness, I waited, feeling the hours or perhaps days pass, each moment stretching into eternity. The air was thick with the scent of decay, the whisper of voices never ceasing. They spoke of things no living soul was meant to hear, secrets that clawed at my mind, pulling me down into the madness that inhabited every crevice of the Whitmore estate. As I hovered on the brink of insanity, a light appeared, dim and distant, like the faint hope of dawn after a night of storm. I moved toward it, every step an agony of fear and anticipation. The light grew, a door opening to a room I had not seen before, filled with clocks, their ticking loud in the silence, counting down to some unfathomable end. The room pulsed with a life of its own, the clocks speeding up, their ticking becoming a roar in my ears. And as I stood there, the hands of the largest clock began to spin backward, the room blurring around me, the whispers rising to screams. And then, abruptly, silence. The clock stopped. I was alone, truly alone for the first time since entering the estate. I turned to the door, hand outstretched to push it open and escape this nightmare. But as my fingers brushed against the knob, a new terror seized me, the realization that the story of the Whitmore estate was far from over. The door before me was not an exit but an entrance to deeper horrors, the true heart of the curse that bound the house and its inhabitants. I took a breath, stealing myself for what was to come, and pushed the door open. The door creaked open with a groan that echoed through the silent house, a sound that seemed to carry with it the weight of a thousand tormented souls. What lay beyond was a room shrouded in darkness so complete, it felt almost tangible, like a velvet curtain that wrapped around me, suffocating and heavy. I stepped forward, the air growing colder with each movement, until it bit at my skin like a thousand tiny knives. My breath materialized in a cloud of vapor that lingered in the air before dissipating into the oppressive gloom. The floor beneath me was slick, and each step was a battle against the pull of the unseen, sticky substance that seemed to want to hold me in place, to keep me there forever. The room was vast, larger than any I had seen in the house, with a ceiling that disappeared into the darkness above. As my eyes adjusted, I began to make out shapes hanging from above, swaying gently as if stirred by a breeze I could not feel. They were bodies, dozens of them, suspended by chains wrapped around their waists, their limbs dangling lifelessly. Their faces, what was left of them, were frozen in expressions of horror and agony, their skin pale and stretched taut over protruding bones. A sound, soft and whimpering, drew my attention to the corner of the room. There, curled into a ball, was a figure, its features obscured by the dark. As I approached, it lifted its head, and I recoiled in horror. The face was devoid of eyes, just empty sockets that seemed to stare into my very soul. 
Its mouth was a gaping wound, edges torn and ragged as if it had been ripped open by some unspeakable force. Help me, it rasped, the voice a mere whisper that chilled the blood in my veins. Please, release me. I stumbled back, my heart pounding, my mind screaming to run, but my legs refused to obey. The figure crawled toward me, its movements jerky and unnatural, as if its bones were broken and poorly set. It reached out a hand, the fingers gnarled and twisted, the nails long and cracked. Help me, it repeated, closer now, its breath foul and hot against my face. I turned to run, but the bodies hanging from the ceiling began to stir, chains rattling as they twisted and writhed. Eyes snapped open, hollow and black, fixed upon me with an intensity that rooted me to the spot. They began to moan, a low, mournful sound that filled the room, growing louder with each passing second until it was a cacophony of despair. The walls around me began to shift, the stone melting away to reveal faces, hundreds of them, embedded within. They were the faces of the tormented, their features twisted in pain, their mouths open in silent screams. They pushed against the soft, malleable walls, hands reaching out as if trying to escape their eternal prison. I was surrounded, the air thick with the stench of decay and the overwhelming sound of suffering. The ground beneath me began to tremble, and I realized with horror that it was not solid at all, but a mass of writhing bodies, buried beneath a thin layer of soil, their hands and faces pressing up against my feet. I tried to scream, but the sound was swallowed by the darkness, absorbed by the walls that seemed to pulse with a life of their own. The figure was upon me now, its hands gripping my arms with a strength that belied its emaciated appearance. It pulled me down, down into the mass of bodies, their cold, clammy hands grabbing at me, pulling at my clothes, my hair, my skin. As I was drawn into the mass, the light from the doorway began to fade, the last glimpse of the outside world disappearing as the bodies closed over me, enveloping me in darkness and despair. I fought, clawing at the hands that held me, but it was useless. I was being pulled deeper the pressure building until it felt as though I would be crushed. In that overwhelming void, a voice whispered, barely audible over the silence that suffocated every other sound. You are ours now, it murmured, a chorus of voices, both young and old, intertwining to form a tapestry of despair. Yet, amidst the despair, a single thread of clarity wound its way through the darkness, I had to find a way out, not just for myself, but for the souls ensnared within this cursed place. The blackness around me shifted, coalescing into a dimly lit corridor that stretched endlessly forward. With each step, the cold grip of the unseen chilled me to the bone, but I pressed on, driven by a newfound resolve. The corridor branched off into multiple pathways, each veiled in shadows that seemed to pulse with a silent malevolence. Choosing a path at random, I ventured deeper into the labyrinthine estate. The walls of the corridor were lined with ancient tapestries that depicted the grim history of the Whitmore family, each seen more macabre than the last. The threads seemed to move, animated by the somber history they portrayed. Ghostly figures danced within the fabric, reliving their tragic fates over and over, trapped in an eternal loop of their darkest moments. As I continued, the air grew thick with the scent of decay. The floor beneath my feet became slick with something wet, but I dared not shine my light upon it for fear of what horror it might reveal. Whispered pleas for release echoed around me, the voices of the house's previous victims, each recounting their own tales of sorrow and terror. Suddenly, the corridor ended abruptly at a large, ornate door. Its surface was carved with grotesque faces that seemed to stare into my very soul, their expressions contorted in agony. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open, revealing a vast library shrouded in dust and darkness. The room was circular, 
with towering shelves filled with ancient tomes that contained forbidden knowledge and unspeakable truths. In the center, a grand chandelier hung limply, its candles long burnt out. I felt an inexplicable pull towards a large, leather-bound book resting on a pedestal in the center of the room. As I approached, the book opened on its own, its pages flipping rapidly until they stopped on a particular page. The text shimmered with a ghostly light, detailing a ritual that promised to break the curse of the Whitmore estate. The ritual required the gathering of several items, a lock of hair from a Whitmore descendant, a piece of the original estate blueprints, and the ashes from the first hearth. Each item was hidden within the estate, protected by trials that tested the Seeker's resolve and sanity. Armed with this knowledge, I set out to gather the items, each step guided by the whispers of those who longed for freedom from their eternal torment. First, I found the lock of hair in a dilapidated bedroom, guarded by the apparition of Lady Elizabeth Whitmore, who wept tears of blood as she relived her tragic demise. I spoke to her softly, promising liberation not only for myself, but for all entwined in the estate's cursed legacy. With a mournful smile, she handed me the lock of hair, her form dissipating into the ether. Next, the estate blueprints were located in the study, hidden within a secret compartment of the desk that belonged to the architect who was driven mad by his creation. His spirit, a twisted shadow of his former self, challenged me to a game of wits. By solving his riddles, I earned his begrudging respect and the blueprints. The final item, the ashes from the first hearth, was found in the ruins of the old kitchen, protected by the spirits of the servants who perished in the fire that claimed their lives. Their spectral forms circled me, their cries a cacophony of anguish and rage. By reciting their names from the family ledger and acknowledging their suffering, I appeased them, and they granted me the ashes with solemn nods. With all items in hand, I returned to the library. I placed each item around the book as instructed by the text. The air grew tense, charged with a palpable energy as I began to recite the incantation. The words seemed to echo through the halls, a powerful mantra that shook the very foundations of the house. As I spoke the final word, a brilliant light erupted from the book, enveloping the room in a blinding glow. The chandelier above flickered to life, each candle bursting with a flame as bright as the sun. The walls trembled, the tapestries fell, and the screams of the damned transformed into sighs of relief. The light receded as quickly as it had appeared, and I found myself standing in the library, the sun streaming through newly visible windows. The air was fresh, free of the stench of decay. The house was silent, but it was a silence of peace, not of sorrow. I exited the library, finding the corridors no longer menacing but rather filled with the warmth of sunlight. The portraits on the walls now depicted the Whitmores not as twisted souls but as individuals at peace, their expressions serene. As I stepped outside, the estate itself had transformed. The ivy that once strangled the stone walls bloomed with vibrant flowers, and the air was filled with the sounds of life. I walked down the path I had once feared to tread, my heart light with the knowledge that the curse of the Whitmore estate was broken, the souls within finally released. As I reached the gate, I turned for one last look at the house, now a monument not of horror but of redemption. I knew my story was only one of many that had transpired within those walls, but it was the one that ended centuries of torment. The Whitmore Estate, once a place of darkness, now stood as a beacon of hope, a reminder that even in the deepest despair, there is the possibility for salvation. And with that, I walked away, the gate closing quietly behind me, the chapter finally closed on the nightmare that had consumed so many. The estate lay in silence, its halls empty but for the memories of the past and the promise of a peaceful future.